Welcome to Chapel. We're glad you're here. Uh, hey, we did want to let you know uh, again about the Great Commission Conference by CBU. Mm-hmm. We're excited to be putting this on January 5th and 6th in Redlands at the Mitten Building. So you register through us. Uh, we have a link here that you can click. You can register. And we want you to to join us. It's going to be a great way to kick off the spring semester. It's going to be a great way to grow together. Um, we're going to have some great speakers and we want you to join us. So think about that. Register with some friends and we hope to see you out in Redlands to kick off the spring semester. But That's welcome cool. to chapel. Hey. And we're excited. We got director of discipleship, Brian Zuniga. Hello. This guy's been here 15 years. We have our special guest, Dr. Kate, Dr. Jeff Kate. Would you Hello. tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been here? I have been here. This is my 27th year. Let's go. And 20. I- yeah. I started when I was eight. But, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, so, uh, That's a, yeah. You started no, in the I, 90s. I started in the days when it was still Cal Baptist College. Yeah. You know, and everything was in the James building. Yeah. So I've seen the place grow. It's been it's been a a blast to be a part of. So your your faculty, what's your role? What do you teach? I teach New Testament classes. So New Testament survey students have me for, Jesus and the Gospels. Yes. Some students take me for Greek. And Love that. So those kinds of things. So Jesus and the Gospels, and yeah. we're looking at the Gospel of yeah, John. That's what we're doing. You're you're an official expert here. We we're gr- <laughs> we're grateful to have you with us today. Well, thank you. It's good. It's good to be here. So we are going to be looking at Peter today. We're looking at Peter. We're looking at. We've been looking at these different characters, and so today, just just focusing in on Peter and his interaction with Jesus. What can yeah. we learn from Peter? Well, we can learn a lot. Um, and so we're going to focus more on John because we kind yeah, of got in a, the serious, Gospel of John, a yep. series going here. And I, and I say that because uh, Peter is mentioned; he's prominent all, in all over the Gospels, all four of the Gospels, mm-hmm. but in different kinds of ways. Yeah, uh, he's the one disciple we know more about than the others. There's eight or nine of them we don't know much about at all, uh, other than their names. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, Peter he comes up at prominent moments, and I think people like Peter because he messes up a lot. <laughs> so we can relate to him. I yep. mean, in every Gospel, uh, he blows it in yep. some royal, royal ways. And so we can learn a lot from them. And different Gospels emphasize different things. In yeah. Mark, they emphasize uh, how he really blew it at the end, and it contrasts to Jesus. Follow Jesus' as example, not mm. Peter's failures. But in John, uh, we see him mess up at times too. And uh, But the beautiful thing is that John actually is the Gospel that shows he's restored. Mm. That's, it it yep. doesn't end on the note, he failed, he blew it. it we see Jesus um, encountering him. Yeah, so, twenty-one, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 moment on the on the beach. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a, that's a key moment. Now, uh, give me an overview. If I've never heard of okay. this Peter guy before, give me the biographical sketch yeah. of Peter. The brief sketch of Peter. Uh, his given name was Simon, which is a common Jewish name. Uh, Peter's his nickname. So even though we name kids Peter today, it was not a given name in those days. We yep. don't know of anybody by that name uh, until Jesus calls him that. Basically, it means like Rocky, just like he wouldn't name a son Rocky, uh, but it's kind of a feature, you know. Yeah. You wouldn't put that on a birth certificate usually. Sure. So so Peter is, is really a nickname. The the Aramaic is Kephas, Cephas, yep. and Paul calls him that. It's the same word, rock. And um, yeah, he's a fisherman. His brother's Andrew. And uh, he's friends with another pair of brothers, James and John. They're all fishermen. And in Mark, he is called from his nets to follow Jesus, and he abandons everything and follows Jesus. Hmm. That's that's the call. Follow me, and he does. And um, now John, John doesn't go into all the details about that. We see him. It, his brother Andrew brings him to Jesus early on, in chapter mm-hmm. one, which is a beautiful thing. And uh, he isn't mentioned much until the end of the story. Uh, he is mentioned about halfway through. It's a wonderful statement. At one point, uh, the Jewish leaders had gotten frustrated with Jesus, and there's this debate going on, and Jesus turns to the disciples, and I think it's chapter 6, and just basically says, you're, are you going to leave too? Mm-hmm. And Peter's the one that speaks up, and he says, where else would we go? You mm-hmm. have the words of life. And it's such a great... So good. It, it really it, is. It's such a great example of what it looks like to follow Jesus. Yeah. Mm. It, you kind of get to the point where you're like, I don't know what else I would do. Like, yeah, I'm it. following yeah. this, the, this, 
this man, this God, this yeah. I'm following you. Mm. Yeah. It, it shows he doesn't understand it all, and he probably had his own doubts. Because, mm. I mean, mm. Peter's there at the Last <laughs> Supper, and when Jesus says yeah. there's a betrayer, and they're all saying, is it me? I mean, they're yeah. all were wondering it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, again, we see Peter's <laughs> very human. and uh, But, you know, his statement is just beautiful. Where else will we go? Mm. You've got the words of life. There's something here, even though I don't understand it all, Completely, yeah. that is compelling me to hang on. Hmm. I'm just thinking about this, the student who says, I'm not sure where I'm at in my faith. Yeah. I want to know more. Yeah. That's, that gives us some a good Confidence. blueprints of yeah. something that, hey, you don't have to know everything. Yeah. You just and, have to be convinced. That, and Peter certainly didn't. Yeah. Uh, it really comes out in Mark where Jesus rails on the disciples. Mm. Don't you understand? Don't you get it? You know, just out of <laughs> frustration. And they never really do. But yet Peter keeps doing, he's making the steps towards the right thing, even yeah. though he doesn't get it completely right. Like even Matthew tells the story that uh, when Jesus walked on water, uh, only Matthew mentions that actually Peter got out of the boat and was walking too. But then he takes his eyes off Jesus, starts to sink, <laughs> and then he's rescued by Jesus. So, you know, he's taking the right steps, but it's it's coming up short, to which the, I think is encouraging to us. Yeah, to the student who, yeah, might not know where they're at. I think what's interesting is that Jesus, or sorry, Peter, <clears throat> doesn't feel uncomfortable continuing to follow him. Yeah. Like in, in our cultural moments, sometimes we have Christian leaders who are portraying a sense of, I have it, I have it all together. Mm -hmm. And someone who's not confident in their faith doesn't feel like they can stay around them and continue to follow them or yeah. like they're good enough to be around these, these Christian leaders. But yet Jesus, the God of the universe, Peter's many disciples, right? Still figuring it out. They still feel completely comfortable around this guy to keep following him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Peter in the Gospel of John, he's just introduced briefly at the beginning. His brother brings him, uh, his brother Andrew brings him to Jesus. And then he's mentioned about around chapter 6, I believe. And uh, I don't think he's mentioned again off the top of my head until the Last Supper in the Gospel of John. Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting scene as John describes it, because only John mentions that it's at that time that Jesus washes their feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a fascinating thing. You know, as Americans, Wild. we we don't grasp what's going on there yep. for quite a few reasons. Paint you know? that picture for yeah, us. Yeah, Eastern sure. culture. So their table would have been low to the ground, even lower than this one. And so they're not sitting in chairs at a table like Da Vinci painted it in the famous picture. You know, everybody on one side of the table pose, right. you know, with <laughs> yeah. a selfie stick, you know. And, uh, uh, so they would have been reclining on their side at a low table. And so your feet are not tucked under a tablecloth. Their roads were dusty and dirty, not paved. They wear sandals. They don't have indoor plumbing, so you don't take a shower every day. And so at a meal, you don't want smelly, stinky feet, you know, yeah. ruining the meal and the scents and all. And so everybody would know they need to have their feet washed. I mean, it would, it would be like sitting down at a spaghetti dinner and not having a fork. Everybody would be looking around going, okay, we don't eat this with our hands, you know. So, so they're at this table. And they know they need their feet washed. And, uh, and no doubt, every single one of them would have washed Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Yeah. But if you get up and wash his feet, you got to wash everybody else's. Ah. And that's probably why they didn't want to do it. So, it, which is really interesting because a lot of times I think as disciples, <laughs> that's awesome. We I didn't want, know that. Yeah, we we want to serve the Lord. Yeah. But helping people, eh, I don't want to do that. That's oh, messy man. and stinky and messy. I, I'd rather I want to serve Jesus. Yeah. Well, we serve the Lord by serving people. Mm -hmm. it's, so yeah, it's interesting. So Jesus gets up and he's the host, and he's wash. He's doing this menial task, washing their feet. And he comes to Peter, and it's really interesting. Peter so says, "So wait, wait, wait. Do you think Jesus did it to show, like, I, I, hey, no one else is going to do yeah. it. I'll do it." I, I think he's showing this is what leadership is. Servant leadership is yeah. sacrificial. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus gets up and does this, and it would have been shocking for the host, Jesus of all people, uh, on the night he's going to be betrayed. <laughs> you know, his hour has come. And uh, he gets up and he's washing their feet and he comes to Peter and Peter says, no, you're not going to wash my feet. You know, I should wash yours is what he's probably thinking. 
And so Peter protests, and Jesus says, well, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have a part with me. Well, then Peter goes the opposite way. Well, not my feet only. <laughs> wash so all intense. of me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My head, like, my, yeah. <laughs> and Jesus like, no, you don't guy. need a bath, you know? <laughs> You're already clean. So, I mean, it's a classic example where Peter, uh, you got to love him to death. You know, yeah. his, his heart's in the right place, yeah. but yeah, his mouth's not, and he's off track, and um, yeah. That's so hilarious. we can relate to that, uh, you know. So I think in that scene we see... Yeah, we, we learned there that to serve Jesus actually is to serve one another. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, that's in chapter 13. Um, and then, of course, the night he's betrayed, uh, Peter, you know, asked the beloved disciple, you know, who's going to betray him. And, and so Peter's kind of an... In fact, it's kind of interesting. In the Gospel of John, we have this mysterious character, the beloved disciple, mm. that starts being mentioned. Mm-hmm. He's never identified by name. Tradition assumes got to be John. It's actually a little unclear. The original readers knew who it was, hmm. um, but it's it's never clarified for sure. But it it, it John does fit in many ways. And uh, what's interesting though is every time the beloved disciple is mentioned, Peter is also mentioned. Hmm. And every single time the beloved disciple one ups Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah. It's like the beloved disciple is this goody two shoes that always gets it right. Yeah. And Peter's not there. Yeah. He's, and, and what I love about that is I think we can all relate to Peter. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it very relational. Just messing up. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting that the, there is this beloved disciple that is kind of getting a lot of things right. Yeah. Next to the, the, the juxtaposition, the next to this guy that just can't, can't get, get anything work. right. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens several times. Like um, the beloved disciples at the cross of Jesus and entrusted with his mother mm-hmm. and vice versa. And uh, Peter's not there because he failed. Mm-hmm. He, in the garden, he was, in fact, it's the Gospel of John that says that in the skirmish when they come to get Jesus, it's Peter that cuts off the ear of the guy. All yeah. the Gospels mention that, but only John mentions Peter's the guy that did that, uh, which shows he's impetuous. He's you know, wanting to do the right thing, but in the wrong kind of way. Yeah, I, I kind of have a quirky it. take on that. Um, I doubt Peter is like going for his ear, like hold still, let me slice that. Um, <laughs> he's probably sure. going for his neck, yeah. you know, fighting to defend Jesus. And the guy ducks and he gets his ear. And yeah. And, uh, yeah. So oh, Peter's yeah. off track there. You yeah. Know? I don't That's think he thing. had that good of aim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you think there's a rivalry between the beloved disciple and Peter? There's a good question of that, because like even at the Last Supper, the beloved disciple's right next to Jesus. Uh-huh. And Peter has to ask him, Psst, hey, yeah, ask motion him who the, over. You know, who's the betrayer? So it, it's, and then like on Easter Sunday morning, when Mary Magdalene's gone to the tomb, it's open and empty, comes and tells the beloved disciple and Peter, they go to the tomb, and the beloved disciple sees and believes without seeing the risen Jesus. Hmm. So he's a guy of faith, mm-hmm. in contrast to doubting Thomas, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who mm-hmm. I won't believe until I see. Uh, so the, the beloved disciple sees and believes. And Peter gets there, and he looks around. He's not sure what to make of it and kind of shrugs his shoulders and goes on. So he, again, hmm. he's, yeah, he's, he's not all there. Right behind. He's not sure what to make of this. Yeah. 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 It's interesting as we think about, you know, Peter's journey and you brought up you brought up earlier this like picture of restoration yeah so if we like stop you know before we get to John 21 yeah we don't get the like we got to close the loop there um so man what can we you you gave us this this high level sort of view of Peter but as you kind of even finish that a little bit what can we learn from Peter as as it continues right yeah I think the big thing that we can learn is despite our failures and mess ups God is a God of grace and mm-hmm. a God of second chances. So when we think about like Peter denying Jesus, we sometimes think that that's kind of a minor thing that he did. He just disregarded, you know, didn't want to get, you know, caught and executed. And But that's actually the one thing you are not supposed to do is to deny Jesus. It's hard mm-hmm. to overstate what he did was the dastardly deed you did not do. You were not to deny Jesus. Like what would that so, mean? Well, in that setting. You know, there's a good chance that by the time the Gospels are written, you're in the time period where Christians are being confronted, are you a Christian? Oh, and wow. And being persecuted and even martyred. Okay. So 
Peter, mm -hmm. so that story becomes very important that, yeah. to the readers to know, don't do what Peter did. That's mm -hmm. a powerful context. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If uh, So he was a rabbi or they were following him. If you denied him, would that like would that mean you're just? Yeah, it, I mean Jesus says in the Gospels that whosoever will deny me, I'll deny, and you must confess mm -hmm. me. And so denying and confessing that really, it, it, we're told in Hebrews, we're told throughout the, the the entire New Testament, hold fast the confession of faith, mm -hmm. even in the midst of hard times. So yeah, Peter is facing a crisis. It's the moment's crisis. If he identifies with Jesus, well, he too could be end up crucified. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's almost an echo of his failure in the simple fact that Simon Peter is not there when Jesus is crucified. Instead, it's a guy named Simon, a different Simon oh, wow. that carries his cross. Yeah. And it's almost like this echo that's like, wow, his absence is noticeable. So what Peter did, I, I, I want to paint the picture of the restoration to realize it's not a minor thing just saying, no, I don't know Jesus. It, it, it really is a big deal in the Gospels, identifying with Christ, holding fast your confession. And so that sets up, uh, only the Gospel of John mentions the restoration. Yeah. Now we get, it, it's implied in Acts, because Peter goes on to lead the church mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Why okay. do you think, but, is there any connection there with the beloved disciple being the, yeah. maybe John, and that's the only Gospel yeah. we see this restoration? You know, I don't know on that. Why, why does John go out of his way to show this? Mm. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that probably the Gospel of John is written to a distinct Christian church. The beloved disciple essentially was the pastor of, the leader of, the main teacher. In fact, I think that's why he's called that, the beloved disciple. It's, hmm. it's his followers calling him that. He's not walking around saying, yeah. I'm the... Dis uh, you know, just like I would never walk around and <laughs> say, I'm the greatest <laughs> professor on campus. Uh, I'm yeah. the one that everybody... <laughs> you know, uh, would... even so, I'm sure my students say that. Sure, I'm yeah, sure that's sure yeah, pretty common. I'm single, sure. Yeah, I've heard that. I've okay, heard that. I'll yeah. figure. Often. You know, yeah. Uh, well, uh, so the beloved... Is, I doubt he called himself... It's his followers calling him that. And so, yeah, um, it, it's kind of interesting how it happens. Peter goes fishing in chapter 21. Hmm. And it doesn't explain why. Is he trying to return to his old lifestyle because he's frustrated with the way things have turned out? Because he was a fisherman and he left the nets behind. So it is interesting that of all things to do... Or is he do, just going fishing? Yeah. yeah. But they're out there in the boat. I like to fish. Yeah. 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 yeah fishing is good. <laughs> so, but he has returned to his old, you know, occupation. And then uh, there's seven in the boat. The beloved disciple is one of them. And, uh, and of course, Jesus is on the shore and says, hey, throw your nets on the other side, and boom, 153 fish. Big old mess of fish. And it's the beloved disciple that, again, one-ups Peter. Oh, it's the Lord. He identifies Jesus. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Peter doesn't so know good. it until then, and then he is impetuous and jumps in, swims to shore. And, uh, and then they have breakfast, and then they, uh, that, that's when Jesus has the conversation and restores Peter. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Three times. And, and most likely, yeah, the, the three questions, do you love me, is because he denied him three times. Three times. Mm -hmm. So good. It's good. Yeah, he's, he's building him back. And uh, but yeah. Now, is there any significance to the way that he says, do you love me? And the... Yeah, you know, in Greek, it's actually a different word that's used. Hmm. Um, but the Gospel of John tends to use the two verbs, agapao and phileo, interchangeably. So, so I don't think it's... Yeah. Uh, even the don't beloved, make too much of it. Yeah. yeah. The, the beloved disciple, both verbs are used. Mm. And I, so I, th I think it's more overlap um, mm. and not so much a distinction. Um, yeah, but it, it is interesting three times. In, and what's the significance of feed my sheep as a response? Yeah. Yeah, well, shepherd my people, and Jesus is the good shepherd mm -hmm. in the Gospel of John who cares for his sheep, hmm. and Jesus has already told them at the Last Supper, I'm going away. You're not going to be yep. abandoned because I'm going to send another encourager, helper. And yep. uh, so feed my sheep, carry on the work of the shepherd, uh, I think is probably what's implied. Hmm. Yeah. It's empowering. It's this giving of this task, yeah. this vision of the church and yeah. making disciples. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Continue on. In fact, an interesting thing in the gospel of John is repeatedly throughout John, Jesus keeps saying, 
I have been sent to do this. I didn't come to this world to judge the world, but the world through me sh should be saved. All these different reasons Jesus has come. And it all builds to chapter 20 where Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. So all these things all along that Jesus was sent to do is conveyed to the disciples then. So I think the feed my sheep, he was he's the good shepherd, continue on my work. As, as God is, so, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you to continue on what I started. Wow. So an, another connection about the restoration that's really interesting is when Jesus feeds them on the beach after they have the miraculous catch of fish in chapter 21, uh, he, he built a charcoal fire. Mm -hmm. And that's like this insignificant detail, except... I, I love cooking with charcoal, so I think... I'm excited yeah, about yeah. that. <laughs> Tell me yeah. more. So the, the charcoal term, the only other time it's used is when Peter's walk, warming himself by the charcoal fire when he denied right. Jesus. Right, wow. denial. Wow. <laughs> so it's like this subtle Oh my goodness, connection. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. It's a subtle connection of he's being restored because he had From denied him early. And so the wow. three denials, the three questions, do you love me? And, uh, and of course, Peter, uh, even as he's being restored, he gets distracted because the beloved disciples trailing them. He's like, what and about he's like, him? yeah. <laughs> and, and Jesus is like, well, if he, if, what is it if he remains until I come? You just follow me. And then there's this misunderstanding. The beloved disciple never die. But that's not what Jesus said. And it's like, yeah. So even <laughs> he as he's just being restored, <laughs> yeah. it gets off track. It's just like, <laughs> don't say anything right now, Peter. Now is not yeah. the time. Just, just receive up. the <laughs> restoration. <laughs> and you know, uh, many times God just has to tell us, mm, just shut up and listen. Yeah. <laughs> At the transfiguration, that's what God says to Peter. You yeah. know, I, I think sometimes with that transfiguration scene, and that's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we misunderstand what's going on because of the chapter break. Mm. So it happens right after Jesus has predicted, I will suffer and die. And in Mark, Peter says, no, you're not. And Peter <laughs> tries to correct Jesus, mm. which I find funny. You know, Jesus, you got that wrong. Let me correct you. <laughs> I just so said good. you're going to be the Christ. You're not going to suffer. And so then the very next scene, when God comes over the mountain and Moses and Elijah are there, and God speaks and says, this, was an, this one is my son, not Moses or Elijah. Shut your pie hole and listen to him. Mm. <laughs> you know, it means mm. shut up and listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And I love that because, yeah, there's many times in my life God just has to tell me, Jeff, just shut up and listen to me, mm. you know, because I want to figure it out on my own accord. Wow. Well, hey, this has been great. I, I've i learned so much. Oh my I am excited wow. about uh, charcoaling. Yes. Um, <laughs> so. Grilling's good. Yeah. Oh, I love grilling. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we're really appreciative of you. Um, thanks for just opening opening scripture and helping us see just yeah. a, a picture of someone who isn't perfect. Yeah. Relatable. I think that's really encouraging that so we can good. follow and not yeah. be perfect and really do some cool things. Um, God can use us for some really great things. And there might be people who are, you know, ahead of us or mm -hmm. growing or more mature or getting it right. Yeah. But yet Jesus still calls Peter yeah. the rock. Yeah. yeah. And great. so uses Peter. And, can't overemphasize, we're all broken, mm. every single one of us. And Amen. We might dress nice and shower and clean up and sound good <laughs> in classes or in chapel or wherever, mm. Yeah. but we're all broken and rotten at the core, and it's God's grace Amen. that changes us. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And that's what we see in Peter is God's grace restoring him. Yeah. Well, well that's a good place to, that's a great place to, to close. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time.